speak and I'm also very grateful to be able to spend a semester in this beautiful place. Yes, so I'm going to talk exactly about uh, algebraic K theory. Uh, about the cyclotomic trace. And I'm going to talk about an example where this helped us do a calculation. So starting with algebraic K theory. So um, maybe I should, yeah. So R is a ring with unit, maybe not commutative. And what I want to study is uh, I want to study finitely generated projective R modules. So uh, these are uh, direct summons. modules are direct sum n and you could also characterize them um, finally generated uh, r modules uh, p uh, such that whenever you have a surjection of r modules f then there exists a map of R modules from P to M. Uh, so, so for all this, there exists S such that uh, F composed with S is the identity of P. Uh, if you're trying to, if you didn't know what a free highly generated module was and you tried to characterize them intrinsically, you could exactly use this as a characterization of free modules, right? Because if you have a surjection to a free module and you want to construct a section, it's a, it's a, it's a surjection, so every, one of the standard generators of the free module comes from somebody in P. So you can send it back to somebody in P. And because it's free, there's no constraints. But if you come up with that characterization, you notice that it also uh, works for direct summons in these R direct summons that you engineered it for. And so they have the sum of the important property of the free modules. And, and, and they're interesting. Um, so the first question you might ask, does that uh, give us anything uh, beyond free modules? Try some cases. So, for example, if R is a field, uh, no, because of course every module over a field is a vector space is free. Uh, but if also if you look at R equals Z uh, or more generally a PID, the answer is still no. Um, not every module is any direct sum of the uh, finite uh, free module is free. But even for uh, even for uh, very nice rings uh, such as rings of integers in finite uh, field uh, extensions of Q, so these are about as nice as they come, the answer can be this. So let me give you an example. So I could take R equals Z, a joint square root of negative five. And I could take P to be the ideal generated by two and one plus square root of negative five. And uh, this is of course in, in R. And as an ideal, then the ring acts on it, so it's a module. And I claim that uh, P is uh, not free of rank one over R. And the reason is that if it were free of rank one, there would be a generator. 
and the whole P would be multiples of that generator. But there is no element in Z adjoint square root of negative five, which divides both two and one plus square root of negative five. So it can't be free of rank one. So you say, maybe I can do a trick and make it free of higher rank, but you can't. Because if I tensor P uh, with Q, I'm going to get a two-dimensional Q vector space. If I tensor R with Q, I'm going to get a two-dimensional vector space. But if I take tensor more copies of R with Q, I'm going to get too big a dimension. So there's no way that this guy can be free. It's not free. But it is projective. It is a direct summit of a free module. So I can look at that you'll generate by two one plus square root of negative five, and I can map it to z square root of negative five plus z square root of uh, square root of negative five, and I can map it back to this ideal two one plus square root of negative five. Uh, but here I can just send a goes to negative a and uh, one minus square root of negative five over two. A. It's a funny thing. This guy is not in square root of negative five. I have this denominator, but nevertheless, if I multiply it by any element in this ideal, I do get an extra. So it makes sense. I can do this. And then here I can send just A, B goes into um, 2B plus 1 plus square root of negative five. Uh, so, uh, BC goes to 2B plus this, this many Cs. So these are maps of modules over this square root of, uh, the adjoint, adjoint square root of negative five. But if you look at what happens to A, if I send it all the way here, it gets sent to minus 2A plus 3A, which is A. So the composition really is the identity. So it's a direct sum in this free thing, and therefore it's projective. So uh, projective. But I did something weird in order to do this. I did uh, this, I invented this thing. It's not a standard thing that you could do for every uh, numbering. So and, and in fact, many rings of integers and in, in, um, field extensions are PIDs. So it says something interesting, non-obvious about the ring. Um, OK. Another example. So I take x to be a compact Hausdorff space. And the ring I'm going to look at is Cx, which is equal to continuous functions on x with values in the real numbers. And then I can look at uh, vector bundles. Uh, over X are uh, twisted products uh, of X with some uh, Rn, uh, which are locally trivial, meaning uh, just a product uh, in a way that uh, respects the vector space structure of the Rn over any x in n over any x and x. So, um, so examples, examples that have a product x cross r, and that's considered a trivial vector bundle. Over each point, you have a vector bundle product globally. But you can also look at the Mobius, open Mobius band over S1. So I can regard the Mobius band as a way of taking a circle and then over each um, uh, point putting a copy of R and giving it a twist. So <laughs> on each little interval, it looks like a product. 
and I can, but I can glue the intervals when I come back with a twist in a way that preserves the addition and scalar multiplication of the line, so it preserves the vector space structure of the line. So that's an example of a twisted. Yeah. And um, given a bundle, given a vector bundle E uh, over X, sorry, E over X, uh, sections. Uh, of E are continuous functions from X to E uh, such that every uh, X in um, X gets uh, sent somewhere in the Rn over it. Just a, uh, basically the bundle gives me a projection from E to X that just sends, just forgets about the vector spaces over points, just send the point to itself. And then the section is a function in the opposite direction. It sends every X to the fiber over it. And uh, sections uh, of any vector bundle E are, a C X module, right? Because a continuous function on X associates to each element in X a scalar. So if you have a map that sends X into E, you could just take the value of the section of every X and multiply it by the value of the function in every X, which is just scalar. So you can multiply elements in the vector space by the scalar. So I can do that. So, okay, so so far nobody's been projective, but actually they have been. So we have a Swan's theorem. Uh, taking sections gives an equivalence. Of categories um, from the vector of bundles over X into uh, finitely generated. So vector bundles, I mean, the fiber is always some finite Rn. Uh, so, and it goes to finitely generated projective uh, Cx uh, modules. So one thing that's really easy to see is that the easy guy here is just the trivial bundle X cross Rn. What are sections of X cross Rn? They're just, you know, and, and worth coordinates of functions from X to R. So clearly, if I take X cross Rn, it goes to um, Cx n. So that's encouraging. And also clearly also if you have sections of a sum of vector bundles are the sum of the sections of the one bundle and the section of the other bundle. Um, but what is also true and less easy to, to prove though not terrible is that um, if you take any vector bundle and you look at the section of so it, that's actually gonna be a finite generated projective bundle over CX. And also every projective bundle over this row CX arises as the sections on a vector bundle. And again, um, this is a situation where it can go either way. So there are some topological spaces, for example, contractible ones, where any bundle has to be trivial. So you don't have interesting um, bundles or modules. But there are other spaces, for example, like we saw the circle, where you can have interesting bundles. And so you can also have interesting modules. So again, we want to study what makes some of these guys different than the other. And so we want to look at this, all the finitely generated projective modules. And so we can. And um, if P, Q are projective or finitely generated projective uh, of modules, so is uh, P plus Q, the direct sum and then the 
uh, sum of where the peak was the summit and where the Q was the summit. So we can add these things, but basically once you add these modules, the thing you get becomes bigger and irreversibly so. So can't really subtract. It'd be nice to have it be a group. So we want to make it a group. So um, um, uh, but can't subtract. So introduce formal differences. Where, so I'm going to define K0 of R is equal to, to uh, the free abelian group on uh, isomorphism plus prism of uh, finitely generated projector R modules. But um, I want to, to use this sum. So if I have a um, generated projector P, and a finitely generated projective Q, and I add their classes in the free abelian group, I want to identify this with a class of the sum. So this exactly introduces formal differences. This is called the Grotendi group of uh, the um, collection of finite generated projective R modules, and it's an abelian group. So that's great. Uh, disadvantage. Is that uh, say uh, P uh, direct sum R plus N is isomorphic to Q direct sum R plus N uh, for sum N, or even some other module, but you can always make it R direct sum N, uh, then I get that the class of P. Is going to be identified to the class of Q, even if Q is not isomorphic to Q. But I'm stuck with this. I can't do anything about it. Uh, the good thing is uh, the class of two uh, one plus square root of negative five is still different than the class of z square root of negative five. Uh, still, in the case of vector bundles, which is part of the reason I introduced this, uh, when people look at vector bundles, they actually talk about stable equivalence of vector bundles. The two vector bundles are considered stably equivalent if you add them to a big enough trivial bundle and you get isomorphic things. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm capturing in the world, in ring world, the stable equivalence of vector bundles. So it's it's a it's a compromise. It's a cost, but it's a cost we've seen before. Okay. Anyway, the cost of paying this price, I uh, now have an abelian group. And so now I want to use tools to maybe uh, break up, uh, if I have a ring R calculate K0 of R, but maybe breaking it up in some clever way. There's an issue there. Like if R, it's all, it's all theory of rings with unit. If R is a ring with unit and it has a subring with a ring of units, then I can look at the quotient. We have multiplication, but the map from R to it will not send, will send one to zero. I can't break up a unital ring in a good way into two unital rings. It's a problem. But what I can do is uh, if I in R is an ideal, I can definitely look at uh, K0 of R mod I. And I can definitely look at K0 of R. And I'm going to get an exact sequence. So this map is surjective. And how do I hit the kernel by some good notion of relative K theory of R relative I? And this is actually actually even depends, actually uh, depends on the on I, not on the big ring, which is an ideal N. So still exact. And then I still can't stick in a zero. And people came up with a theory called K1. And then K1 R. And then there was a K1 Ri and K2. And so on. It's got more and more complicated. I can tell you what K1 is. Or was there? Yeah, I can tell you what K1 is. So uh, K1R is 
is equal to G L R modulo the commutator subgroup of G L R with itself. And what is this G L R? It's the union over N of G L N R, where if I have an N by N matrix A invertible, I can regard it as an N by one by N by one invertible matrix by sticking zeros like this and then sticking a one here. So that's how the n by n sit in the n by one space. And the one's going to take in the union. So basically, what I end up with is all those things that have a square invertible matrix on the top left, and then an infinite identity matrix below and zeros elsewhere. And so uh, that's what it is. And um, K2 was more complicated, and K3 was more complicated. And uh, people got this uh, along that sequence, so it's clearly part of the same theory, but it wasn't clear where this was going. And uh, quilling, uh, let's see, I didn't write on this. Okay, so I'm gonna send this up. Maybe I did use this board. I think I will do this because it's, it's, it's bigger. So, uh, will it define the IR uh, for all I believe in the in a unified way? So here's what he did. Uh, we can we can to any uh, discrete group G associate a space BG where the homotopy groups of this BG are uh, G if I equals one and zero otherwise. So basically, we can take all the group theory and put all the groups as fundamental groups of some suitable spaces that have no other homotopy. And maps between these BGs are, in fact, classified up to homotopy by homomorphisms of the groups. So we really have group theory living as level one of topological spaces. And so uh, we uh, have, uh, uh, for all R, if we look at the group of invertible matrices, infinite invertible matrices over R, uh, a space B G L R and um, Quinn defined a map from this B G L R to B G L R plus and uh, what this map does uh, that uh, abelianizes a fundamental group, which is GNR, which is sort of related to what I wrote here about K1, uh, doesn't change homology, it's an isomorphism of homology, and is universal uh, with respect to maps to simple spaces. So I'll use the simple spaces only once, but simple spaces for topologist means topological space where the fundamental group is a billion. And also the fundamental group for every space acts on all the higher homotopy groups. The action should be trivial if it's simple. And then when I write that it's universal, I mean that uh, if I have a map from BGLR to some simple space, I should be able to factor it through this BGLR plus. And then um, what uh, Quillen did is he defined KIR, it's going to be the homotopy groups of this BGLR plus. If I do that, then uh, this is path connected, so I don't get the, the uh, K0. So you just stick cross K0 R as a set. And if you do this, 
then you agree with all the cases where people had figured out what the k-groups were, and then you get higher k-groups as well. So, um, but this I left a little uh, fuzzy. What is this BGLR plus? So, outside or inside? I'm a bit confused now. Uh, it is. It is inside. So, uh, what I was saying. Oh, the topology. Oh, the topology in this. Yeah. Just discrete. So, 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 so this is a stupid thing. Basically, so this is for all i greater than or equal to zero. What I really should have written is k i r is equal to a pi i of b g l r plus uh, for all i greater than or equal to one and use that as a oh, definition. Okay, okay. But then I want to throw it in oh, and it's a cheap trick and okay. therefore it looks unnatural because it is. Um, okay, so, um, so there are a lot of, um, a lot of other definitions of this space that's not the original one. The original one was simpler and smaller, but maybe a little less convincing. The one I want to talk about is group completion. So, um, so uh, if we uh, have a space X with an associative operation, group completion, The topological sense uh, is a map from X to loop B X. So this is a uh, bar construction. I didn't really discuss how you build this BG for a um, loop G, but you could do it with a bar construction. And if you have a space that has an operation, but it's not actually a group, you could still do the same construction to it and you end up with B of it, whatever it is. And this loop is uh, pointed maps from S1 to whatever. And, and, we, and we consider it group completion. This adds inverses. It abelianizes fundamental groups. If we apply it to N, uh, if we do loop B, then with respect to addition, we get something that's equivalent to the integers. So that's confidence inspiring. And if we do this to if we do um, loop B to the disjoint union of all n greater or equal to one, uh, B, G, L, N, R then what we get is Z cross this B, G, L, R plus. So first of all, what is the operation here? Well, for any ring, I can go from G, L, K cross G, L, L into G, L, K plus L, but taking if I have a K by K matrix A and L by L, L, B, I can send it to A, zeros, zeros, B, which is going to be invertible if A and B work. And that's actually associative. And that induces a map from B, G, L, K cross B, G, L, L into B, G, uh, L, K plus L, which is also associative. And that's the operation I use. Um, you might, um, okay, you might be a little surprised because I was into matrix multiplication, now I'm into this weird thing. So first of all, I should say that uh, if I, I have matrix multiplication on GLR, but because GLR is not a billion, it does not give me a map on the Bs. So I don't have that. Uh, so I need something else. But also, what I'm going to do, I'm going to billionize pi 1. I know I'm going to billionize pi 1. So if you have a matrix that looks like this, B00I, zero, zero, well, it's conjugate to the matrix I, uh, zero, zero, B. So if you're going to abelianize, you're going to identify these two guys. Okay. But if you start multiplying, you see, if you multiply them by A, A, zero, zero, I, multiplied by B, zero, zero, I, that's, of course,
course, uh, a B zero zero I, which is what you think the product is supposed to be. But if you start multiplying A zero zero I times I zero zero B, you get this A zero zero B that I was talking about. So this product actually, since I know I'm going to billionize whatever I do, this product actually is the correct product. So this BGNR plus is a, 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 um, a group completion that's also some kind of verbalization of BGNR. And you can construct a BGNR plus in, in, in many different ways. You can also do it in ways that start from the category of finite generic projective modules over R. And part of the miracle is that all these different definitions <coughs> look so different, can really give you the same thing. The only thing is that all these different methods, however strange they are, none of them comes with a good algorithm for calculating what it is that you get. And that's why it's a hard invariant. Okay. So I get that I need to calculate. So I need to understand MGLR uh, plus which is some sort of... Um, Are there any groups that come into this or GLNs, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, but there are any human groups. <laughs> I mean, the fundamental group, uh, what I'm saying is you, you, you see... You don't... Am I going to see other groups? Non abelian groups? Um... Are there going to be understanding this uh, case? Uh, so, 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 okay, the GLNs are going to be the only non abelian groups in my okay. talk. Yes, but the homotopy groups of yeah, yeah, of are going to be more complicated, yeah, yeah. but they're going to be a BLN. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, so, uh, I need to understand some sort of abelianization. Can I interrupt you? Yeah. <laughs> So see GLR, mm -hmm. GLR plus plus means the commutator. I mean divided by the commutator. No, 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 no. Plus is a construction for spaces, and it's a strange construction. Okay. And I want you to think of it as the a component of this group completion thing, or as if as, 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 as there's the original construction was you add some two cells to kill the stuff you don't like, but you do it very carefully, and then you add a few more three cells, and then you don't change the homology. So it's some some strange and um, a, a goal-driven construction you do to spaces. It's not just a visualization. But pi one is exactly the abelianization. Pi one is exactly the abelianization. Yeah. And there is no higher pi, pi i. Okay, right. So. So I don't see why this does not satisfy the universal property. No, no. So it abelianizes the, the fundamental group, and there are no higher. Homotopy, homotopy groups, right? Homotopy groups, but the organization of the space creates higher homotopy groups. Complicated and ah, hard oh, to understand. I oh, homotopy. I see. So, so this BGLR plus may have higher homotopy. Groups. Yeah, it does. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's the okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's what. Yeah, no, it would be wonderful if you could apply construction right, level-wise right. to the homotopy yes. groups. <laughs> okay, okay. So, okay. Now I understand. Now. So, yeah. So, some sort of organization of. Uh, the space uh, B G L R space made of matrices. When you have things with matrices, you often like to abelianize them with traces. So, can you use trace? Well, it's not obvious how you would. So, um, there's a, another invariant, uh, Hochschild of rings. That's a good. For traces. So here's what I want to do. I want to um, take a ring with unit R and I want to look at our tensor R uh, D0, D1, our tensor R, tensor R, D0, D1. Two and so on, where di of r zero tensor r one tensor tensor r n just multiplies the i 
this one Rn, and uh, this is for all zero is not equal to i less than n, and dn of r0 tensor r1 tensor tensor Rn is just Rn r0 tensor r1 tensor tensor Rn minus one. So it's some kind of weird cyclic um, bar construction. So I have these functions. And uh, HH star are special homology groups of R uh, are uh, the homology groups uh, of this complex with respect to some, I goes from zero to n minus one to the i di. So for example, here you look at d zero minus d one, d zero minus d one plus d two, zero minus d one plus d two minus d three, and so on. That's a Hochschild homology groups. I can also use this as a recipe, recipe for uh, building a space HHR. So the way I would do that is I would take one um, zero simplex, one point for each element of R, and one one simplex, which is a, a, an edge for each element of R tensor R, and I'd glue its edges by D0 and D1. And then I'd have a uh, triangle for each element here, and I'd glue its edges by D0, D1, D2, and so on. And I'd get the space that I call HHR. And by the theory of simplicial abelian groups, In groups. If I take the space pi star of this HHR or pi i of HHR, it's isomorphic to HHIR. So I can really think about it as a complex or as a space interchangeably. And here, and I can do the same thing. So if R is a ring, I can also do the same, do the same for the ring M, MR. And here I get a very, and so I get a space HH of MMR. And here I get a very nice trace um, from HH MMR into HHR. Um, and the way I do that is in, in level. So what's M M by M matrix? Oh yeah, yeah, M by M M by matrices. Sorry, yeah. So that's also awesome. so I can do that. And in level N, I can define this trace as follows. So H H M M R has got M M R tensor N plus one. I can do matrix multiplication. The usual formula, but I leave the tensor stuck in, and I go from an n plus one tuple, uh, a tensor of n plus one tuple matrices to a matrix of n plus one tensors. So M M R tensor n plus one. It's a standard matrix. Uh, so just and this is the just the tensor product of the rings. Uh, the tensor part of the ring R, yeah, which is what I had there in the original Hochschild picture. Right, so for example, what I'm saying is if I had A, B, C, D, uh, E, F, G, H, then uh, I would, it's a tensor. This, this would go to A tensor uh, E plus B tensor G and so on and so forth. So just the matrix multiplication formula, but I still leave the tensors in. But then I get it and by M matrix over this crazy thing, and I could just apply honest trace to end up in the thing. And this commutes with all the DI and commutes with everything, and it gives me maps either on the spaces or on the homology, whatever I want. So this is the trace that I thought was what I needed. And then Keith Dennis had a 
at this page here. Sorry, I think I missed the first line of your lecture. You thought you what you, you needed to do what? Oh, I want to understand the category of finite generated projective modules, okay. both what I have and the maps between them. And, 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 and you know, the fact that all these GLMs, they were there. This is the self maps of the self equivalences of the elements in my category, at least some of them. So, yeah. so it, it went a little crazy from there, but that's the goal. That's where I wanted to, that's where I want to be. And, and so, so Dennis's idea is we started with B, G, L, M, R. And he said, let's embed this in something called the cyclic nerve of G, L, M, R. And what this thing is, is uh, in level uh, N, you have G, L, M, R, N plus one copies, and di like in Hochschild case. These <laughs> strange wraparound d's. And then she said, let's map this into hh of m m r. And then let's map this to hh r by this trace. And the amazing thing is that although this map looked sort of complicated when I defined it, this is actually an equivalence or an isomorphism of the homology groups. This is something called Morita equivalence. Here I start with something that will eventually grow up to be my BJLR plus, and I end up with something that's nicer. So, um, but this step is, is although it looks drastic, it's, it's, it's harmless. What do I do here? Here, I'm just saying, if you give me an n plus one tuple of invertible matrices, I can forget that they're invertible and just say, oh, look, I have matrices. And then I can stick tensor products between them. And then I have a tensor product of n plus one matrices. So that's this map. <coughs> and some people have called it fusion. It's, it's, it's not harmless. It's, it compresses a lot. It's not the greatest, but we have it. And then here, we have an inclusion that's good. So this is space in CY, GLMR. Mm -hmm. That's the semi-simplicial construction out of GLMR. Uh, is that what you're doing? With, this, with these particular, it's not the standard bar construction. It's a sort of weird, in a standard bar construction level, and you'd have N guys. Here you have N plus one, and you have these weird wraparound terms, like in the Hochschild. It's a strange thing. What it is, is it's equivalent to the free loop space of B, G, L, M, R, which is equal to maps, so free maps from S1 to B, G, L, M, R, maps that are not pointed, loops in this space. So this is space NCY is it just that it's, it's equivalent to this. This is a, uh, this thing is a skeletal small version of this thing. With the compact open topology. What kind of topology do you put? Oh, yeah, this would do co compact open compact. topology. Yeah, but this is a much smaller version of this. This is every homotopy class. If you pick where you want to start and you pick the homotopy class, here you have only one loop corresponding it. Here you have a lot of loops corresponding to it. So, um, so we do this. And um, the thing is, that it includes uh, into uh, contractible loops. I didn't give you the formula here, but I'm saying that if you look at the formula, you include into contractible loops, loops that you could just contract to a point. Now, this space is functions from S1 to BGLM. You can act on, on, on this space by the circle by, by pre-shifting the circle and then mapping. So it's a, it's a S1 space. Um, the contractible loops are not uh, fixed points. The fixed points are the point loops. But, but they are equivalent to topic things. Uh, OK, so you do this anyway. And then. So, so this is space and CY is what? Homotopy. I, 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 this is homotopy equivalent to this. Homotopy. You can include it to this in a way that's homotopy equivalent so to the homotopy equivalent. 
but then you are mapping BGL into only the contractible loops. Yeah, yeah, but not into point loops. If, if I map it into the point loops, that would be that would be much easier. But it, it, it isn't the way it goes. <laughs> Anyway, now I want to let M grow, and this doesn't exactly stabilize, but I can tinker with it uh, a little bit, and I can stabilize it. Thanks to a math uh, B G L R into H H R, and then this thing is simple. This is the one place where I'm going to use it, and therefore. I can factor it to be JR plus. So I map this mysterious space with homotopy groups, I don't know, to this thing that I have tools to calculate the homotopy groups. So this will be a great success. The only thing is it's not a great, it's not as great a success as one could hope because the approximation of homotopy groups is not so great. So then I look, what did I do wrong? So this trace thing was my great friend, but fusion compressed too much. I lost a lot of information there. So what I can do is um, to make fusion less destructive. Uh, replace the ring R by its associated uh, ring spectrum. Uh, and map to THH instead of HH. So what is going on here? So a spectrum in topology, very much different from a spectrum and analysis, uh, is a sequence of spaces uh, where the interesting topology uh, shifts the dimension uh, up by one in each step. And uh, we're interested in its state. So in a typical sequence that you, the most important one is the sphere spectrum. So my sequence of spaces is two points, a circle, a two sphere, a three sphere, and so on. It's a sequence of spaces. Every With each one, the interesting topology goes up by one. And we're interested somehow, if I, if I change something in the beginning, nobody cares. And um, a thing like this has multiplication if I can take the whole sequence times the whole sequence and map it in a, in a sensible way to the whole sequence, which I can do here because I can take like an I-sphere and a J-sphere, take their product and then look at their smash product, and that's an I plus J-sphere, smash them together. So I have a good product here. And um, here I am sort of skimming huge amounts of work. But um, uh, if you uh, have a decent product, uh, you can, you get a ring spectrum, spectrum, and can work with it as a ring. So for example, for the sphere spectrum, uh, it has decent multiplication and you can think of it as a ring. And then to uh, any discrete ring R, uh, you have uh, a ring spectrum. Uh, that 
who can think uh, of as an S algebra. So just like uh, Z is the initial unital ring, then S is the initial ring spectrum. And in fact, uh, Z when viewed as a ring spectrum is an S algebra. And I'm about to get- So this SCJ topological ring, what is yes? Yes, so I'm gonna reproduce, yeah, it's exactly, it's a ring spectrum. I'm gonna reproduce ring theory inside these crazy spectra. And there's gonna be other ring spectra, but they're gonna be, um, for every discrete ring, there's gonna be a ring spectrum, which is gonna be an S algebra. And like the model theory in, in, in spectra is just gonna reproduce the model theory of rings and just copying rings right. into spectra. No, I guess I don't know. So S is a sequence of topological spaces mm -hmm. with a ring structure? Yeah. A ring-like structure. A ring-like structure. You think of the whole thing as a ring. Basically the multiplication comes from if you take this whole sequence and you take a product of it by the whole sequence and degrees add up, then if you take SI in the first sequence and SJ. It's a gradient ring. Worse than that, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's just a huge amount of machinery. <laughs> just not addressing. That's how you multiply and you add. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you think of, because you think of things stably, then you think of each SI as replaced by loops on the higher, and an SI plus one. And they're sort of identified. But once you have loops on the higher SI plus one, with loops, you can add loops and concatenate them. So, so there's a huge machine there. <laughs> and I'm just ignoring it. So concatenating will not make it a billion, right? Yeah, yeah. How do you make it a billion? Oh, I mean, this is the, 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 the okay. For ring, you need a billion addition, right? Which yeah. And this addition is a billion up to homotopy. It's a part of the machine because, you know, if you concatenate, yes. that's a yeah. billion up to homotopy. Yeah. And the machine swallows up all the homotopies. <laughs> and it's, it's a huge machine. Um, the rings can have multiplication that could be commutative or not commutative. In this case, this, is, this could be made commutative. And, and if the ring is commutative, you can make it as, uh, into a commutative algebra over the commutative sphere spectrum and so on. But, but there's huge amounts of technical but stuff. What's the relationship between Z and S? Right? Uh, Z, the relationship? Z is a ring. Uh, I want yeah, you, they're both rings, right? Yeah, but I want you to think of Z as a ring spectrum. And as a ring spectrum, Z is just one of many algebras over the sphere spectrum. Okay. And then other, and then there's a hierarchy. So there's the sphere spectrum, which is the lowest initial. Then there's the, the ring spectrum of Z. And then there's the ring spectrum of other rings. Such as, so I can get it confused. Such as number rings, such as the rings I was talking about in the beginning. Okay. And then uh, what I wanted to say here is uh, HH is constructed. out of uh, R tensor, R tensor, whatever. And these tensors are over Z. And THH, which is what I want to introduce now, is constructed out of R tensor over the sphere spectrum, R tensor over the sphere spectrum, and so on, whatever that means. Again, huge amounts of machines. But basically what I'm trying to say is if I have a more initial ring than Z, then if I tensor over a more initial ring, I collapse less than if I collapse, if I tensor over a more initial, a less initial ring. And that's why if I factor this through uh, THH, and, and names I should write here are good really in Bookstadt, expect a gain and then I, I do get this gain and then I was mentioning that I have this thing that I don't it's not it's an injection it's not at all a, uh, a surjection it goes into the contractible loops so um, if I want the map to be good approximation I should somehow try to isolate the contractible loops so I need to add some kind of 
fixed points. And this network is not going to the fixed points. That's what I was saying earlier. It doesn't go into point loops. I can't make it into the fixed points. I can map it into the homotopy fixed points, but I need more than that. So again, there's a long story about what invariant. So this is a map from, from here to here. And then I can further factor this through something called TCR, which is an appropriate um, version of fixed points that tries to isolate the contractible loops. And this was originally done by Bokstedt, Xiang, Nelson, and then done by Nicolas and Scholz in maybe a more systematic way. And this is a better approximation. So what I want to take from that, I'm going to go, go to the sideboard. And the idea that the TC while being hard to calculate, still we have better tools to work with it than for K theory, because we both have processes that we have some methods for dealing with. So um, I'm going to call KR is BGLR plus and so KR to TCR uh, is a uh, better approximation. And now I want to quickly say as many uh, things that people can do with this. So um, McCarthy said if R to S is a surjection of rings uh, with nilpotent kernel and uh, K S to KR induce in no, KS to TCS uh, is an isomorphism on high star um, star less than or equal to zero, then uh, then so is KR to uh, TC. So if it's a good approximation for R, it's a good approximation for S. So TCR is another space yes. associated to R, which is homotopic to KR? Uh, well, um, okay. Is it homotopically equivalent to KR or no? In, in wonderful, in, in, in the good cases, which are not all cases, it's um, um, KR is the connective cover of TCR. Not something I was going to talk about, but the map induces an isomorphism on pi star in, in, in non-negative dimensions. TC also has a high negative one. No, so KR to TCR in, in, uh, is isomorphism in pi star for every pi. For pi, pi greater than or equal to zero. Yeah, yeah. Because actually these guys, no, because so actually these guys... Well, because actually these guys it's are a complex. No, no, but they're not. They're not really spaces. I like you say spaces, but actually they're spectra. And spectra are allowed to have negative homotopy, and TC has negative one homotopy. Uh -huh. But but it's all a story. But, and uh, also, if uh, KS uh, completed at P to KR completed at P uh, is ISO on pi star, uh, star greater than equal to zero. Uh, so, uh, no, uh, TC has completed. Uh, so, uh, so for R, okay, I am basically out of time. So, there's a lot of good results that you can do. Um, so, Hesselhoff and Madsen use this relative case. And the fact that for Z mod P for thing P elements, uh, actually these these things are an isomorphism on pi star in positive dimension. To get that they are an isomorphism for all um, um, A rings A, which are F P, uh, which are Z P algebras, which are algebras over the P addicts, which have a special property that as modules over the P addicts, they're finally generated. And then uh, Hesselhoff and Madsen use this and some complicated stuff I don't have time to say to uh, calculate the um, 
algebraic K groups of um, complete discrete valuation fields where the um, residue field is perfect, with characteristic P greater than zero. And then Hesselholt and Michael and I were able to do this for uh, division algebras over K like that, where the residue field is finite of characteristic P greater than two. And basically the, the story was gonna be that I don't have time to say is that because this TC is built step-by-step step from stuff that's not so bad, we're able to build our result. Oh, we sort of for the division algebra, you get the same result as you get for the center. And we're able to build the results step-by-step step from these more, um, you know, workable with invariants like topological Hochschild homology, and that's how we're able to do the calculation. So it was very useful for us that we didn't have to have this huge scary package of K theory, and we could do TC where you build things step by step. But I don't have time for the details, but, but that is the idea. Are there any more questions? Actually, I am sorry to interrupt you. I mean, not interrupt you now. But, uh... No, 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 free. So, so if you take PGLR plus, are there rational homotopy groups well understood? I mean, of course, it will depend upon R. Uh, so, the rational homotopy groups. So, you just, you said yeah. that KI, I mean, see, rational homotopy theory in general is much easier to deal with. Yeah. So, for that, uh, there's a variant of this that doesn't discuss this TH. So, this, this uh, universal property for rational homotopy is probably much easier to deal with. Yeah, yeah. So, so then when you do this corrections, what have we done wrong? Then you have this um, this uh, KR and it maps to something called HC minus of R. And that's just something that you define with complexes, double complexes, but nothing worse, no spectra. And that is a rational uh, isomorphism on, on homotopy groups. Yeah, this is, this is work of good winning. So you see, you still have, uh, it, it becomes a lot easier, but the fact that you mapped into contractible loops, that's that you can't get out of it. So that was this, this invariant doesn't deal with the fusion, but it deals with the, um, with the fact that you mapped into the contractible loops. And so good really did this much earlier. And yeah, and it is much easier. <laughs> I mean, it's complexes rather than this whole, these, all these machines. So when you start, you start with a very general unital ring, right? No, mm -hmm. it didn't have to be commutative or anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so does every, I mean, so when you take the trace, I mean, you have to have some trace. Oh, but the trace was the trace, the, the, the trace was, you know, this, this really, everything it did really works for non-commutative rings. So what I just said is you have these matrices and you're going to matrix multiply them. Which you don't need the relativity of the ring. And then you're going to take the trace of the matrix, just sum up the entries on the diagonal. You know, okay, so you just matrix. take this as somehow your trace. Function. Yeah, that's I mean, it, it doesn't have the same properties as the trace function if you are on the commutative ring, right? Oh, okay. so you don't need any any properties. No, no, I mean, I, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe there's not enough words. I mean, everything in this talk bracket is called a trace. So uh, I, I just want to use the version of trace that's appropriate to matrix trace. Yeah. I, I really, and, and because I, I tinker with this, I am able to just stabilize matrix trace to work at the cost of having this fusion that collapses everything on me and including into the fixed points that comes back to help me. Yeah. yeah, that's a nice thing about the theory. And in our calculation also with division algebras, not commutative. It really, I mean, if you don't have a unit, it, it really goes badly, but you don't need commutativity. Okay, any last questions? All right. Thanks again for a great talk.